Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Zooty Pickups. In today's video, we will be talking about the Nike Epic React Fly Knits. So these shoes came out today, hot off the press. Um, for those of you watching in the future, that is February 22nd, 2018. They retailed for $150. There are two main colorways as various some other ones, but the, the main colorways were this navy blue color and uh, uh, a white color. I'll, put, I'll throw up a picture right there. I got the navy color because I thought it would be like a better color for a beater shoe. I have too many white shoes and white shoes tend to get dirty super quickly. And I didn't really have anything like navy, so I decided to go for it. And I'm really loving these colors. So it seems like the internet is very polarized about this shoe. Either you love it or you hate it. Um, but regardless of your thoughts on this shoe, um, the Nike marketing machine has been hyping this up relentlessly for the last two months or so. So chances are you've probably at least heard of it. And I definitely noticed that when um, I went to pick this shoe up this morning. Um, I, I, w I went to the Nike store next to my work just as they were opening. I didn't expect anyone to be in line for this. I didn't think there was enough hype, but when I showed up, there were actually like seven-ish people there. So, you know, I guess there is a decent amount of demand for this shoe. Um, I also saw that it sold out pretty quickly online. Uh, after a couple hours, it was all gone. So I guess good job, Nike marketing team. You guys built up a lot of hype for this. So let's see if the shoes are actually worth the hype. So the main star of this shoe is this React midsole right here. However, this shoe is not the first shoe uh, from Nike to have this React midsole. It's in fact uh, the, the Nike React Hyperdunks that came out last year in 2017. In fact, the React foam was actually made for, for basketball. Due to the nature of the React foam though, they had to kind of encase it in this rubber housing because the foam was a little too mushy and a little too like pillow-like for basketball. And when you're playing basketball, you need uh, a pretty responsive cushioning. Uh, you need quick rebound. So they kind of solved that issue by wrapping it in this uh, rubber shell. So when Nike was developing a running shoe, it was very logical for them to use that React technology and take it out of that shell and just have it naked like this in its full glory. That way you can feel all the properties of this React midsole. And I gotta say, it is pretty fantastic. So this cushioning is very bouncy, yet it, it's, it's soft and it's very light at the same time too. So it, I think it's kind of difficult to achieve all of those properties in one type of cushioning system. I think the only other cushioning technology out there that kind of does the same thing I would say is boost but we'll talk about that in a little bit this uh, this midsole as you can see has this crazy kind of like tread pattern on it and at first I thought it was just like you know really cool looking but um, according to Nike this this pattern is a computer generated pattern they had an algorithm and they used computer aided design to come up with this uh, groove pattern right here it's supposed to essentially um, be very flexible and maximize the amount of bounciness and cushion that you get out of this React midsole. And as you can see, they also put rubber here on the high wear areas. This was also based on their computer simulations and uh, wear testing from runners uh, to kind of help with the high wear spots. However, that being said, um, pretty much about 70% of the, the, the React material right here is exposed and this material does not feel very um, sturdy. So we'll see how it does in the durability department. My guess is that it will not do well, but we'll see about that in a couple of weeks. So I guess uh, the burning question is, how is the React foam? Like how does it actually feel on foot? And how does it compare to other cushioning technologies out there right now. So um, in order to answer these questions for you, I put this React shoe on my left foot and on my right foot, I tried assortment of other shoes. I tried ZoomX, I tried Lunarlon, and I tried Boost. So I would say, you know, these four cushioning technologies are the pinnacle of modern sneaker cushioning technologies. So you know, I thought it'd be a good kind of like matchup. So, um, first of all, I would say 
that the React feels the most similar in terms of characteristics to Lunarlon. Um, it's essentially like an upgraded version of Lunarlon is like the best way I can put it. Lunarlon is just uh, a lot denser. It doesn't squish as much. It's not as bouncy and it's not as comfortable, but the overall kind of properties are very similar. Like when my feet were in both of these shoes, I would say that it felt like my left foot was just in a more comfortable version of, uh, of my right foot shoes. So I would say they're very comparable, except, you know, the React is just way more comfy. This is extremely heavy too. Now, now that I'm holding them side by side, like this, this uh, Lunar Lawn midsole just feels like a brick compared to the React midsole. The React midsole is extremely light compared to Lunar Lawn. So how does it stack up against Zoom X? Uh, Zoom X is Nike's kind of like golden boy right now. This is kind of hard to get your hands on. Um, the Nike 4% vapor flies here. These have, um, always been selling out and uh, I managed to get myself a pair and this is actually not a fair comparison because this, this is like a professional running shoe right and this is kind of like a casual running shoe slash like a, a lifestyle shoe but um, the cushioning feels drastically different here the uh, Zoom X feels more like a waterbed it's very squishy and when your foot um, kind of like leaves the ground the Zoom X like really pushes you forward so there's a lot more rebound and when your foot is just resting in the shoe too it um it like sinks in a lot deeper just exactly like you would expect from like a waterbed um the react foam while it doesn't like push you as much as the Zoom X and it doesn't let your foot sink in as deep as the Zoom X it, it's a lot more supportive um it's a lot more solid feeling and this is a lot more the Zoom X is a lot more like jelly-like feeling. So I would say um, the Zoom X is a little more comfortable, but um, for kind of like prolonged um, all day wear, I can kind of see uh, the Zoom X getting a little fatiguing on your foot because it's, it's, it's more or less designed for actually running and energy return. And this is just kind of like comfortable shoe. So finally, um, I guess the biggest competitor from the three stripe we have the boost so this is interesting this is honestly not a fair comparison i would say because as you can see here there is more react than there is boost on this shoe uh, the the boost on the ultra boost is thinner than the react on the epic react so uh, there is a little bit of a discrepancy there so take this with a grain of salt I felt that they were very similar feeling in terms of being like cushy shoes. However, the React had a little more bounce, had a little more rebound than the uh, the Boost did. The Boost definitely has bounce, but not as much as the Reacts did. And it felt like my foot was kind of like sinking a little deeper into the Boost, just like standing still, than it was into the Reacts. Um, that being said, I did feel like the cushioning was a little better on the Reacts just when I was being stationary and just by walking around a little around the house. So um, yeah, I think um, it's it's a hard call, but I, I do think that the React is a little more comfortable than the Boost. Let the downvotes come. So I've mentioned this in other videos, but I hate it when reviewers don't give a, a conclusion to their comparisons. Like, I want to know what is the best and what is the worst. Like, there's no, none of this like, oh, you know, you should get whatever is best for you type thing. So I think the best one out of all of them is the Zoom X. Zoom X is the most superior cushioning technology. I wish they, they put this into more shoes, but it's very limited right now. The second best cushioning technology, I say, is the react it comes right behind zoom x it's extremely comfortable very bouncy and uh, very wearable at the same time um, very closely behind react i would say is boost boost is great i think it had its run but i think react is really giving it a run for its money and finally we have lunar lawn at the very end lunar lawn super old cushioning now don't buy lunar lawn it's heavy it's uncomfortable it's meh so yeah, I, I as you can see, I really like the um, the React foam. I think Nike did a great job. So that's enough about the um, the midsole and the outsole. Let's talk a little bit about the upper because I think the upper we have a lot of things to talk about as well. Um, so it is a full fly knit upper. 
Um, however, this is probably one of the more complicated uh, knit structures I've seen on a knit based shoe in a long time. There's actually four different types of knit patterns going on here. I've actually counted. There's uh, this kind of like loose knit zone up here that it's um, for, for your foot to ventilate through. And you can kind of actually see uh, through this zone. If, you, if I put my finger in here, you can kind of see my finger. Um, so you might want to take care of what kind of socks you wear because you will be able to see through this area. And then you have this toe zone, which is a, a tight knit that is very um, rigid and gives you that structural stability so your toes don't go popping out. And then you have this uh, mid zone here, which is just kind of like this general uh, middle of the line gauge knit that's just consists of the body of the shoe. And then on the top here, finally, we have this uh, vertical knit, which gives us this uh, elasticity, this um, lateral elasticity right here that lets your foot slide in and out and applies your midfoot uh, compression. Speaking of midfoot compression, there is no flywire in this shoe like most Nike shoes. They use a TPU fuse cage, very similar to like a Adidas Ultra Boost Uncaged. So as you can see here, you have the eyelets here for the shoelaces with this TPU fuse panel. And on the inside, there is a transparent TPU fuse panel that consists of the inner mid cage. And it kind of like starts right here at the base and comes all the way up to right before the laces here on either side. So when you tighten down the laces, that uh, inner TPU cage will kind of compress over your foot, giving you great midfoot lockdown. Um, that is also in conjunction with this uh, stretchy part of the, the, the fly knit up here. So I think overall it does a really good job in terms of midfoot lockdown. So moving to the side, you have the Nike swoosh logo uh, done in the same TPU fuse material on the medial and lateral sides. And uh, moving to the back, you have this kind of like blue, uh, what I thought was a plastic heel counter, but it is not actually plastic. This is actually the same uh, TPU fuse material. It's actually just a lot thicker and they put kind of like this uh, soft touch coating on it. So it feels um, kind of soft to the touch, almost fuzzy. On the inside of the shoe, you have some Nike lettering embossed right into there. And um, on the heel, you have this uh, yellow pull tab that says Epic React. Going down, there is a reflective 3M uh, stripe right there. And it goes to this, um, I wanna say like heel plate. That is this hot pink color. Uh, I'm assuming the, the purpose of the heel plate is to further stabilize your heel during your um, heel strikes during running um, and give a little more stability to this uh, React material because there's really nothing else kind of stabilizing your heel down here. There is no true tongue on this shoe. It's just kind of like this fake tongue that is part of the elastic. And the ankle of the shoe also is just uh, uh, the knitted elastic material that just kind of hugs your ankle. And it's very form fitting. There's not much room left here. And I really like that about this shoe. So when I put it on, it, it creates a very sleek silhouette along my foot. So oh, yeah, I think the, the upper is great. I, I, I mean, there's not too much to be said about these uh, knit uppers these days because everyone has these knit uppers, but I think this is probably one of my favorite ones. So um, finally, let's talk about um, fit. Uh, so I went true to size on this and I would say it fits me perfectly. It is a little snug in the midfoot, but then again, my midfoot is really fat. So uh, you might not have that issue. Um, in terms of um, length, I thought it was perfect. Just a little bit of wiggle room in the toe, but nothing, um, nothing major. Some people are saying you should go a full size up and you could probably do that and be fine. But I do like my shoes to fit a little snug. Um, I, I wear these with relatively thin socks and it just seems to fit perfectly that way. So I would recommend going uh, true to size, but if you want a little more wiggle room and if you wanna wear it more casually, maybe go half a size up. So yeah, um, all in all, I am super happy with these shoes. Um, I think with these shoes, Nike is definitely challenging the Ultra Boost's throne in terms of lifestyle slash performance shoes. I'm really excited to see what Nike has in store for us in the future um, with this uh, React Foam. It's, I think it's like a really cool technology. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna throw these on foot so you guys can see what they look like. And once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.